Anyone who has spent any significant amount of time designing gardens can tell you, you cannot overstate the value of a good, detailed, scaled base plan. But if you're just getting started with creating the garden that you want to create, how do you get your head around the distances and spaces without spending a lot of time trying to create a scaled base plan for yourself, especially if you're not familiar with the process of creating a good, detailed, scaled base plan? Well, that's what we're going to talk about today. Welcome to Planning to Garden. I'm Ed Chandler. So on today's episode, we're going to talk about how to create your first site markup. This is intended to just be a simple way to get your head around the distances and spaces that you have to work with. And to do it, we're going to use some free tools and a Sharpie marker. So if you're ready, let's dive in. So I've pulled up a map of part of Sacramento, California, and let's see, we're going to find a good spot here. Um, for this example, I'm going to choose a street that isn't oriented east-west so that we can look at how the, the site is turned a little bit. And we're going to turn on satellite view, and we'll zoom in here a little bit more. Uh, this looks pretty good. That looks clean. So let's zoom into here. So the first thing that we want to do is to change the layout of our view of Google Maps so that we can get a printout that we can draw on. And so what we're trying to do is fill up an eight and a half by 11 sheet so that we have the, the image centered in there and we can make our notes on it. So I'm gonna set it up like this, maybe make it just a little bit wider. And then I'm going to go up here to the menu and click on that and I'll say print. There you go. All right. So we'll just ignore the notes and we'll say print. And we only need, let's see, is this one of one? Great. So we've got the property filling up this piece of paper here and we can see the corners, all four corners. And it's just one sheet. So we can say save. We're going to save it as a PDF. And so we're just going to save it to the desktop. So now that I've gotten that PDF, I can cancel that. And we're back to the map. So we'll want to keep this up because we're going to take some measurements right here in Google Maps. But first, I'm going to go print out the PDF we just created so that I can mark it up with the Sharpie. OK, so here is my printout from the printer. You can see my printer is having a little bit of issues today. Uh, but we've got the, the property filling up most of the sheet. And so we're ready to take our Sharpie and do a, a markup of this. So let's go into back into Google Maps and I'll show you how to get measurements that you can use to do this. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do, and I'll let you see the markup that I'm doing here on paper, move the keyboard out of the way, is that I want to estimate the rough boundaries of the property. So we look at where these edges are and we can see where the neighbor's driveway is. So we're going to follow that line down and say that is the edge of the property. So I'm gonna do this line and every now and again, I'll put two shorter ticks in the line um, as that is, it's called a phantom line, line type and it's often used as a property line, line type so that you can keep track of what the lines on your paper mean. So that's one side of the property. On the other side of the property, we have the garage on this property and the garage on the neighboring property. And so we're going to say that that property line runs right down there. So we're going to come down, same thing with the two little ticks, come down. All right, now we have the overall boundaries of the property and you can look at the roof line and look at what the, the roof looks like. So. You know, if we just trace the, the outer edges of the house here, like this, looks like we've got a little pop out there. This is a, a peak that comes out. And we'll come across like that. Catch that peak. And then it looks like the actual top peak of the roof is back here. It doesn't quite match up. Okay, so we come all the way out to our eaves. So now we have the house and we have the overall layout of the property. Now, if we jump over into Google Maps, we can right click here and you get a whole series of options. If you go down to the very bottom, it says measure distance. Now, click on the map to measure a distance. 
So we're going to click on here and it gives us a zero and an endpoint. So the first thing that we'll do is get the overall distance of the property. So I'm going to go to the back fence line and I'm gonna go all the way to this front sidewalk and line it up pretty well and look at that. Now that says 129.86. We're going to call that 130 feet, close enough. So we'll take this, our markup sheet, and we'll do a dimension off of that. Now I'm gonna give myself some extra space here. We'll say 130 tick mark for feet. And I'm going to give myself some extra space to add some smaller dimensions underneath. We'll do the same for up here, getting to the corner of the property. And I can see it pretty well right here, this boundary between the two properties. So I'm going to go there and then come across to where it's nice and straight. And then I'll leave that. And that's close enough to 60 feet. So here at the top, we'll say that this is 60 feet, six zero feet coming across there. And again, I've left myself a little bit of room underneath to make some smaller dimensions. So now what else do we have on here? We have a driveway and we have a walkway, it looks like that comes across here. We have a walkway that comes over and we'll get a little bit more information about this as we dive into Google Maps, but we're just getting some rough dimensions of what's going on here. So we're marking out some of the pieces that we can obviously see on our plan. We have a little shed down here So now what we're going to do is we'll use our measuring tool to start coming across and measuring the distance of these different things. So 19 and a half, and what does that give us? 22. So we'll call that 19 and three like this. So that's 19 feet and three feet. And then we're going to come right here to this edge and we'll pull this guy across. And so now we say this is about, we'll just say that's about 30 feet, something like that. It says 29 and change. So we'll give it 30 feet, okay? And again, we're just trying to get a rough measure. And then if we go here to our, our edge point and we come to the edge of the driveway, it's about, it's about eight feet. So we'll say eight feet here for the width of the driveway. Then we can turn to the side and do the same thing. Now I've sped up the rest of this part of the video so that we can get through getting these dimensions more quickly. It does take a little bit of time, but as you can see what I'm doing is just working my way around each side of the property to get a chain of smaller dimensions. That makes it really easy later on when I want to see the size of any particular space. I have the dimensions on two sides and so I can tell how big that space is and come up with the square footage. And I'm just going off of the easily recognizable reference points that I can see in the image. And so what you can see is we're starting to get a very quick understanding of the overall dimensions of our property just by using the, the measuring tool. And for now, I'm gonna close this and what we'll do is we're going to turn on a 3D view so that we can look at this a little bit more. We're gonna enable globe view. And so now we can tilt the view into 3D. Ah, and see that gives us so much more information to work with. So now we can see the back of the house and we can see that there is a little window here. So I'm gonna do two little tick marks for a window uh, it looks over here where the, the concrete is, there's a door. So we'll assume that door probably opens out toward the driveway. There's a window, which is probably something like a living room window, and then maybe a little bathroom window or something on, there on the back side of the house. So we have some windows. And then it looks like there's a gate across here. Yeah. Uh, and we've got the tree back here. And then if we take this little arrow thing here and we tilt the view, we can look at the side and it says that there looks like there are probably two bedrooms on the side of the house. So we'll note those. And you can see where we looked at the side of the house here. Then we'll tilt our view again and looks like 
this is a, it looks like a covered porch. And then there are some front windows at the front of the house. So at the front of the house, if I turn my paper to make it easy to keep track of where I'm pointing, there's a window that goes almost all the way over to the corner and then uh, over to the, the peak and then a smaller window to the side there at the front of the house. And then this space here, and I'll mark that on the sheet, that looks like a covered porch. So I'm going to draw this in as a covered porch. And it looks like the walkway actually comes under and comes up to that covered porch like that. So there's a, a walkway that runs across. So let's go down into street view and see if we can't see that front yard a little bit better. There you go, it drops us right in and we can see, yep, that's a covered porch. It looks to be about five feet deep, it has some camellias in front, some irrigation valves there. And it looks like that same rock detail that we saw in the backyard is right here. So that means that there's a, a line of rock work right there. And this eave is actually an overhang. So there's a little bit of a, a separation. So now what we have is our overall, uh, just a starting site markup that we can use to start getting some rough ideas of the space. Now, Looking at this site markup, what can you do with this? Well, one of the things we can do is we can say, okay, where are the entry and exit points? So we know that there is a door here in this corner at the front, and we know that there's a door at the back. There don't appear to be any other doors out of the building. So those are our major entry and exit points. And so we have, if we look at our site markup and we go one step further, we could say, okay, you know, there is this protected back parking area here. There's kind of an open uh, yard space. And if we were to improve that area, I'm gonna get out of street view for a moment, go back to our 3D. In the, in the front yard, since we're looking at the front yard, we come out of the front door, so there's kind of a zone of influence around the, the front porch. And then there is this walkway that comes across. And so if we we're going to change the, the landscaping, we might do sort of a buffer zone, something like this, where you know the this area by the porch pushes out into one space, and then there's a sort of a, a buffering area closer to the house and then more street adjacent landscape closer to the back of the sidewalk. If we go to the back of the house, let's click around. Looks like we have a couple of windows on that side of the buildings. So we'll catch those quickly. A little window here at the corner and one kind of part way here. And then we're going to click back to the backyard. And if we were to build out around this egg, exit point out here. This is probably a living room or something. So we'll say this is this is a potential, you know, first garden area right adjacent to the house, which would then say uh, this larger area might break up into sort of an open play space and something a little more defined like a kitchen garden. And because on these maps, north is up when you print it out of Google Maps, that's very useful for keeping track of where the sun is going to be. So this will get this spot here will get a lot of sun. So it would be a good spot for a kitchen garden and wouldn't be in the way of the other activities. And then we have the under tree area. And we have kind of the back zone here along the fence. And then we have this little sort of storage area that we said was four feet wide back here behind the garage. I like to use a space like that as back of house storage for things that you don't need to get to very often, but you do need to keep some materials or tools on hand that don't otherwise live in the garage. So there you go. It's a first site markup and it gives you a rough idea of these spaces. And you can look at the overall sizing to say, okay, this is you know, 40 minus three is 37. So if it was 35 by 40, you'd be looking at something like 1400 square feet for this whole area. So you can use your measuring tool to break these down and look at the actual square footages of the different areas that you're starting to define. 
That way, when you go to, let's say, a materials yard and they say, well, how many square feet are you talking about roughly? You can give them a fairly good idea. Oh, I'm talking about 200 square feet or, oh, I'm talking about 1600 square feet. Outdoor space adds up very quickly. So, you know, little seemingly small differences can become very big in terms of the amount of resources that it takes to, to build something. One other thing to understand about this is that if you look at the angle of the property, because it's printed out with north being up, that you can take a line straight down the, the paper and compare the angle between straight up and down and the angle that the edge of the property is at. And so this is about 15 degrees. It's in Sacramento, it's pretty common. And so you can see that the tilt of the property is about 15 degrees off of north. So when you're drawing your plan, you, you know, if you were to square this up and draw a plan for your backyard, you would show that north arrow as being tipped by that amount to compensate for that twist off of north. So that's a very handy thing that you can do with your initial site markup. So there you go, an easy way to get your head around the distances and spaces that you have to work with. So let's recap. Getting a good understanding of your site in terms of the distances and the spaces that you have to work with is an integral part of understanding what you have to work with. We talk about it in the place portion of the HPF framework because you want to really understand what spaces you have to work with and how many square feet that really translates into. And so to do that, you can go to Google Maps and you can create a one page printout of your overall property and then use the free tools in Google Maps, just right click and go down to measure distance. And then by measuring the, the incremental distances and outlining the areas or the zones of your yard that you have to work with, you can begin to get an idea of the spaces and distances that you have to work with. So that'll translate into your first site markup, which is a really easy way to get started understanding your space. So your next step is to go onto Google Maps and print out your property on using the satellite view onto a single sheet and then mark that up with a pen and use the measure distance tool inside of Google Maps to quickly get a sense of the overall distances around your property and the key features. Then you can use that to start defining the zones of your future garden space and begin thinking about the, the sizes and amounts of area that you have to work with. That's it for our show. If you liked the video, please like and subscribe and make sure that you've signed up for the Garden Creator Studio newsletter. As always, to the creator within you, best wishes.